Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, but welcome to another episode of One Piece A Day. If this is your first time jumping into the One Piece A Day series that I've been doing, basically last year I challenged myself to read one chapter of One Piece A Day every day until I catch up to where the manga was because I missed out on One Piece, or well, partially missed out on One Piece as a kid. I watched the four kids dub, didn't think it was for me, and basically ignored One Piece for, you know, about 20 odd years. Uh, so basically I thought I was missing out at some point uh, and decided I might as well dive into the franchise at some point. And the series itself is quite daunting, like the barrier for entry seems quite intense just because of how many chapters there are, how many episodes there are, and it just keeps going. So I thought, what's the most realistic way to catch up to the franchise? And I thought that that would be reading one chapter a day every day until I catch up, uh, hence one piece a day. Because this sort of limits my progress, lets me focus on the story, and I can actually grow attached to the narrative characters and everything like that, uh, while keeping a pace and knowing my limits. Uh, and so far, it's been over a year since I've done it. It's about 430 odd days since I've done it. As of releasing this video, it'll probably be something around 440 or something like that. And uh, as of recording this video, uh, I've basically just finished Any's Lobby. Like it is sort of in an epilogue type state uh, right now, but uh, I think it's fair enough to say that the arc is finished. And the last time that I did a One Piece a Day video was when I had completed a full year of the journey, and at that point I believe I had just started Water 7. So in these videos we go through several topics as part of the update, so where I am currently, what I think about the franchise, uh, sort of thoughts about certain characters, like favourite characters, favourite arc, favourite villains, uh, things I don't like in general about it, things I do like about it overall, thoughts on the experiment side of things, uh, favourite fights, um, plot points that I like or don't like, uh, general theming and stuff like that, uh, other things like One Piece news, like things, like new games that are announced uh, that I can play, or uh, figures that I've bought, or figures that have been announced, or certain things that relate to my journey of One Piece, not necessarily uh, One Piece as a whole, because if I dive too far into news of One Piece, then I'll be spoiled on it. Even though I have been spoiled to some degree, uh, there is still quite a bit that I don't know about the franchise, and as I'm reading it and discovering new things, it's actually quite cool uh, seeing all these things that I didn't know about or knew on a very surface level and didn't realise they'd be explored so early in the franchise and things like that. A uh, great example is Dolphamingo. I know that he is a major player later on, but I didn't realise he was introduced so, so early into the franchise. But uh, that being said, let's start uh, with the general update of where I am. I did briefly gloss over it in the intro, uh, which is quite a long intro, uh, but I have just about finished Any's Lobby, and the last time I did an update I just started Water 7, so we might as well discuss sort of Water 7 and Any's Lobby. Now, coming off the back end of the Jaya Arc, Skypea, and the Long Ring, Long Land, or the Ring Island thing with the Foxy Pirates, uh, I was having a lot of ups and downs and a bit of doubt about the franchise just because I didn't like Jaya, Sky Appear was okay, had a really strong ending, but a lot of the theming and general character arcs didn't really care for that much, um, and Foxy Pirates, I just did not like that at all. Uh, so basically One Piece needed a strong arc uh, to follow up, uh, we needed another Alabaster or something like that. And that's a big ask, but when they started Water 7, there was definitely a lot of world building. Uh, and at the end of the Foxy Pirates arcs, uh, Foxy Pirate arc, they started to introduce what would become relevant for Water 7 and Annie's Lobby, which is Robin. And Robin joined during Alabaster, or at the end of Alabaster, and they didn't fully explore her story, but there were definitely elements of uh, her backstory there. Um, but uh, Annie's Lobby and Water 7 is when we truly explore it and find out her motivations as a character, what she's all about. We also get introduced to Frankie, 
but the main thing about Water 7 is uh, it's a big arc about sort of characters' relationships to one another. So you sort of see the how tightly knit the Straw Hats are and how that can come apart depending on if they agree or disagree with Luffy. And a big part of that was Usopp's relationship to Luffy and Luffy's decision to ultimately abandon the Merry Go, or Going Merry, because it could no longer sail the seas. And Luffy was really originally uh, on Usopp's side, but after really thinking about it and seeing the state of the ship, uh, he realized that he just couldn't keep the boat and it was a tough decision as a captain and ultimately the rest of the crew agreed with Luffy but Usopp didn't and it led to a falling out and it was good to see Usopp sort of become more of a character and not necessarily just like a joke because generally considering everyone else's power levels and arcs so far Usopp is kind of a joke. Uh, Chopper is too to a degree but he had enough of a hard backstory and dark arc uh, that we know there's more to him, whereas Usopp, he did have a bit of a dark arc, but it was still quite surface level, all things considered. Um, so it was good to see his character development as well as his relationship with everyone else and how uh, this can break down and the actual dynamics of Luffy being a captain and what that means. Um, so Water 7 was quite interesting in that, and on top of that we had Robin disappearing from the crew this whole assassination plot for the major shipwriting company uh, with Iceberg and everything like that. And it was a whole intrigue thing, what's happening, the Straw Hats are framed for an attempted murder, uh, and all these other crazy things going on, as well as the, introdu in as well as the introduction of CP9. Um, and it was just a very interesting arc. There's so much world building going on, and a lot of plot points that were hinted at and became relevant later in the arc and didn't really feel forced. So it was really cool. I uh, quite liked how Water 7 played out. Initially the Frankie stuff I was a little bit unsure of uh, and I think a lot of that was intentional because Frankie's development is a procedural thing that leads through Water 7 and in, into Annie's lobby and while I'm finishing Annie's lobby I think that Frankie is a much better character. I do know there's probably a lot more to explore about him and he sort of leans on the edge of being a joke and being serious. Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to his design and a moment to moment sort of thing like if he's in a battle, if he's talking about his past or he's just hanging out with his group. Uh, but generally there was a lot going on in Water 7 and in his lobby. We got introduced to CP9 uh, who are the sort of more well, sort of one elite government force uh, who were undercover in Water 7 and did all this other crazy stuff and eventually led to kidnapping Robin and uh, bringing her to the Gates of Justice in Annie's lobby. Uh, and these major players in CP9, there were quite a few of them, but in terms of the major players, they would have been the undercover units in Water 7, which was uh, Bluno, Califa, Kaku, and Luchi. I think it was just four. Um, and then there's more at the actual Annie's lobby. Um, I thought that they were interesting characters. Uh, in terms of abilities, they were pretty interesting. Uh, some of them had development, some of them didn't. It was a bit awkward. Uh, Kaku, I liked him being a joke of, like, is he related to Usopp because he had a long square nose, or is Usopp's got a long round nose, uh, and things like that. Uh, Califa, I quite like Califa, mainly because of her design, but I do also sort of like either the weird seriousness of her as well as the straight man playfulness. Uh, I don't know how I'd describe it because she was in a fight and she was serious but also didn't take it seriously at all. It's, it's bizarre but I liked it. Uh, also her outfit is very nice. Um, but Luchi was one of the more interesting characters. Uh, while I don't think we got nearly enough backstory or motivations for him, uh, just, I think, the threat of his power and how seriously he takes this job and how almost, like, sickening he becomes in just, uh, like, midway through a battle or midway through tormenting someone, he gets, like, a wicked grin. Um, he seems like a real threat. 
And while I wouldn't say that his abilities are on par with, say, like, what Crocodile could achieve, uh, I'd say Lucci's, or Rucci, I don't know, I think it's Lucci, um, I'd say Lucci is much more of an individual threat. It's like, if you meet this man and if you cross this man, you are gone. And I thought that was interesting. Every time he appeared uh, as an antagonist, he was a massive threat. Uh, all of the skills that the CP9 had were really cool, like their shave dash, uh, the just general super speed and skills, uh, the finger pistol thing. The finger, finger pistol thing is super threatening. And in any other series that is not a shonen, that would be like an absolute one-hit kill. Um, but this is One Piece, everyone's getting horrible injuries, constantly bleeding everywhere, and they are fine. Uh, but generally, I thought that uh, what Luchi and CP9 represented was a cool and interesting threat, and we got some really cool fights out of it in uh, Eni's Lobby, some really cool fruit powers and things like that. While I don't think we had nearly as much characterization as we could have for those characters, I still think that they maintain themselves as pretty good villains or antagonists. I'm not 100% sure how evil they are, although from what we've seen in the flashbacks of uh, the world government and things like that in One Piece, uh, they are definitely painted as the antagonists of the franchise. Um, but that's not to say that all of the Navy, Navy are evil because we see characters like Aokiji letting Robin go or just newly introduced to Garp and we can tell that Garp isn't a villain. Um, but that's generally where I am right now and sort of the rough uh, key parts that I've taken out of it, which is just the dynamics of the crew in Water 7, as well as the introduction of villains in uh, Eni's Lobby, as well as a bit more of a picture of what's going on with the world government. Uh, and then the key part of Eni's Lobby was Robin, and Robin's flashback, her motivations, uh, why she's considered a monster and everything like that. And I wasn't quite sure what to feel at first because whenever I talk to people about One Piece and Robin in particular, it's usually like, oh yeah, I really liked um, Chopper's flashback and Nami's flashback uh, and all the darkness that happened with that and how sad it was and everything like that. But usually when I talk to people about Robin, uh, it doesn't hit nearly as hard or they're just like, oh yeah, whatever. Um, but after reading it, uh, it really hit hard. <laughs> Um, when it was Robin's flashback, I think it was the very first chapter of her flashback, uh, where there was just like no text of her just going home to an empty house, uh, finding some, like a little bit of cold bread with a note saying, eat this, uh, while the rest of the people in that household were out because they don't really consider her family. Uh, and she just sits there quietly eating bread and crying. Um, that just hurt. Um, and then the rest of her flashback is just tragedy after tragedy. Like she's got these small happinesses in life and they show the, her small happinesses. Um, but the, they just tear it off from her. They just take everything from her and it's absolutely devastating. Uh, and it's a weird thing where she's sort of resigned herself to die because, uh, she's got nothing worth, uh, living for. And it's, this thing of nobody wants her around, but she's still fighting for survival, uh, even though she's not sure herself if she wants to live. Uh, and when it comes to a head, when Luffy's trying to convince her to come back, uh, it's just this really, really strong moment of it's like, tell us what you want, Robin. Uh, let us know because you've never had a choice in your life and we want you here. Uh, we need you because nobody else up to that point did. And it's just a really, really strong character moment. All of the flashback, all of these moments came together to make Robin a way better character. Um, and and his lobby as a more complete arc. Um, but I just found it interesting because whenever I talk to people, they talk about Annie's lobby in terms of like the spectacle of it, but not necessarily the emotional weight of it so much. Like everyone likes the moment where Robin screams that she wants to live. Um, but I think that there's so much more to it. It's like why she's doing that, how she's doing it, uh, her entire journey up till this point. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that was probably the key part and key takeaway from Annie's lobby. Um, but 
that is the general update of where I am currently, what I've come through, because usually I was doing these updates around every 40, 50 chapters or so. Um, but for one piece that might cover an arc, might not, but 50 chapters did not cover an arc, especially Water 7 and Any's Lobby, because now I understand why they're always spoken in the same breath, because they are complementary to each, each other, and there's no break between the arcs, they just chain one into the other. Uh, and we normally break arcs up in one piece by island, and so they are two separate arcs technically, but they are still that one story. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm glad that I waited until the arc was finished. This might be the common thing for the update videos from now, that I wait until an arc finishes and then just talk about it, uh, unless there's other climactic things going on. Uh, but generally that's where I am, that's what's happening, that's my general thoughts on what I've read so far, uh, what I thought about the arc, uh, and little nitpicks and things from it. Um, in terms of the other categories that I usually go to, uh, favourite character, after Annie's Lobby, I think it's still probably Luffy, although I do still really really like Zoro, especially his fight against Kaku and Jabra. Uh, where he had uh, Soge King uh, just tied to his arm, or oh, well, handcuffed to his hand, and then like grabbing onto his arm to hold up his sword. Um, like Zoro, he's serious and he's stupid in such a cool way, if that makes sense. Or he's cool in such a stupid way, uh, either or. Uh, and that's I just like Zoro because of that. Him constantly getting lost and everything like that. It's it's Zoro, classic Zoro. Uh, Luffy, I think is still just the best so far. Um, we did get more from him, like I mentioned in Water 7, we got more about how he views himself as a leader, uh, what he feels as a leader, and the tough decisions he has to make as such. And I thought that that was way better for him. Uh, not only that, he had uh, the first showcase of Gear 2nd and Gear 3rd, um, so we got a much more evolved and stronger Luffy. Uh, even though he still had his dumb moments, but I think generally his motivations and strengths uh, were way better in these uh, little arcs and just built on him as a character, even though we won't see that much in flashbacks. Uh, and especially right at the end of Eni's Lobby, now that we've been introduced to Garp, we are learning a bit more about Luffy and a rough idea about his sort of family tree or relationships to one another. And uh, in the last chapter that I just read, uh, he's surprised. He's just as surprised as everyone else about who his actual dad is. Um, so we know that at the very least, uh, Garp was probably the one who raised him, and Dragon just was absentee the entire time. So I'd say favorite character is Luffy, and uh, I am still learning more about him, which is good. And they are introducing more about him now. Uh, which is fantastic because before a lot of it was just slight character moments. Like I think from the intro to Arlong Park, we got some good characterization for Luffy, uh, a little bit in Alabaster, but then mostly silent the whole way up until now. Uh, Cause like, I don't think we got really anything from Skypea uh, or Jaya that much or um, Foxy, just whatever. But I think that we got some good uh, insight into who he is as a character from uh, Water 7 especially. So that's good. Um, favorite arc so far? I still think it's probably Alabaster. But I did thoroughly enjoy Annie's Lobby, even if it is almost like a boss rush. Because all the characterization and story development pretty much happened in the previous arc. Um, but I, I'd still say Alabaster is still probably my favourite arc. Uh, I've talked about it a bunch before, it's just I like the motivations of the characters. I like Crocodile's plan because I like Crocodile as a character. Because I just think it's interesting that he's got overwhelming physical power, but he chooses not to do that, he chooses to play the long game. And I think that's just so much scarier. Uh, favourite villain? I mean, I just talked about him. <laughs> uh, it's still probably Crocodile, but I do like Luchi. He's interesting. Uh, I want to know more about Luchi. Uh, things I don't like about the franchise. 
uh, or things I don't like about the recent stuff. So generally, uh, I don't like the lulls in a lot of the arcs. I do understand that they're there to refresh the reader, but uh, some of them just feel so awkward. Um, like the Foxy Pirates, I just didn't like it. Jaya, it did have its uh, importance to the overall story, but I still didn't like it that much. Uh, Skypea just, it, it didn't have enough weight because it was genuinely removed from the world. Uh, I do have a sense that a lot of the things from it are going to start becoming more important later. Uh, for example, the dials, because Usopp has kept those. So it did actually serve to make the characters a bit better. I don't know if it's really something that I don't like right now, but it might become a problem later. It might be the way they drag out some of the battles, because it was like we had a pretty good finale for like the Luffy versus Luchi fight. Um, but it just kept going. <laughs> so when Luffy punched Luchi through the Tower of Law with um, Gear Third, I was like, okay, that's a good way to end it. That is just the ultimate hit. Um, but the fight just kept going from there. <laughs> so uh, that was a bit eh. Um, it was still a really good fight from then on. It's just that that felt like it dragged because the fight itself up until that point was pretty intense anyway. Um, but I guess you could say the same thing about Alabaster with how many times Luffy fought Crocodile and survived purely because Crocodile just decided to stop fighting. Uh, but yeah, I'm not too big of a fan of drawn out fights, but I do know that One Piece does it quite a bit. So I don't know if that'll be something that I don't like too much. Like I don't mind it too much right now, but it might be a problem later. Um, we'll see about that. Uh, things I don't like as well, um, I didn't care too much about some of the Frankie family stuff. I feel like a little bit of it dragged on just a bit. Um, sometimes, and this is very specific, sometimes I don't like it when, uh, One Piece does like the ugly cry when the characters start crying and just snot and tears just going down their faces because there's something about it that triggers me to start getting emotional. Um, so uh, for the wrap up to Annie's Lobby, I did know about the going Mary stuff beforehand that we had to say goodbye to Mary and uh, that would be it. Um, and I heard people crying about it and things like that. And I was just like, oh, well, I already know what happens. It's not going to really affect me. And uh, Mary appears at, towards the end of the arc and I start tearing up a little bit. And I was like, oh, it's, it's fine, whatever. Um, but as Mary says, good, says goodbye to everyone, I just start crying. And I was just like, what? How did you get me that hard? It's, I wasn't ready for that. Um, so sometimes I don't like it when they do the ugly cry because it's something about it that gets me. I'll be perfectly stone-faced the whole way and then as someone starts like breaking uh, and it gets me as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that one's that's probably something. Um, overall thoughts on the experiment. Uh, still happy to do it, still happy to do uh, one chapter a day. It does get very annoying sometimes when you can't read ahead. Uh, Sometimes it's very easy to forget that you may or may not have read a chapter. So sometimes I have to check Twitter during the day to see, did I do it? I'm not sure. Um, which is also good that I'm live tweeting uh, every chapter that I do. So it also keeps a record of me reading it. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to continue it. It's really no hassle to read one chapter a day. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, again, not sponsored, not sponsored plug or anything like that. The Shonen Jump app is just really good at keeping track of stuff. Uh, I like it. Uh, favorite fight of the series so far, if it's changed. Uh, I still do like the crocodile fights, but I did really thoroughly enjoy Luffy versus Luchi, at least the first half when it ended with the gear three punch. Um, I did also like Zoro and Sanji fighting uh, Jabra and Kaku. That was cool. Uh, I did quite like Frankie against the balloon guy. I can't remember his name, but we had the zipper mouth thing. I actually quite like that. Um, Frankie is pretty damn powerful. Uh, 
it's not my favorite fight by any means, but I liked Sanji versus Jerry, <laughs> the guy in the train. That was great. Uh, I just loved the Jerry. Um, that was weird, but funny. Um, I did, I did like most of the CP9 stuff. It was really good. Um, it's nice to see Nami have like a genuine character moment in a battle, um, with her staff. And it's cool to just actually see her like properly useful. Um, Saga King, uh, way better than Usopp for aiming. Just suddenly it's weird. <laughs> um, but I don't mind Saga King at all. Um, uh, oh yeah, there. Yeah. So it was important because, um, both Zoro and Sanji powered up in their fights. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember it now. So everyone got a power up uh, for like Sanji, Zoro and Luffy. So Luffy did gear second and gear third. I really like it. Uh, I like how they explain it, things like that. Uh, Zoro doing the Ashura thing with, I don't know how it works, but he, you know, he had nine swords. It's like, he's either so focused, his damage increases or he's moving so fast, there's multiple arms, whatever it is, it's cool. Uh, I, I'm sure it would look weird, uh, in the anime. I mean, it looked kind of weird in the manga and I have seen a statue of it. Uh, it, the statue looks pretty cool though. They did a color thing with it to make sure that you knew where the main body of Zoro was. Uh, and Sanji doing his Diablo Jambe thing, the fire foot, uh, that was cool. But out of all those fights, um... It's probably Luffy versus Luchi, because as I'm thinking about them, I had to remember Zoro and Sanji doing those abilities, because it is a really densely packed arc, um, whereas Luffy Gear Second was very iconic and, rem and memorable. Uh, and now I see the like fist down pose uh, and everything. I'm like, okay, yeah, everyone does that now. And that's, that's like the One Piece moment. Um, it's not as sort of impactful as like Super Saiyan 1 for the first time, uh, but I can see, like, this would have been pretty hype uh, at the moment. Uh, so I'd say favourite fight is probably Luffy versus Luchi, uh, even though it did drag on a bit. But that first chunk of the fight in the Tower of Law, I really liked. That was really cool. It was just trading blows, and they were all heavy blows. And I really liked that, as well as them explaining sort of how Gear Second works during that fight. And going like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, that's roughly it because the next part is sort of One Piece news and there's not a lot that I can talk about in terms of One Piece news because everything's a spoiler so I have to try and, try and avoid it. Uh, although I am deeply plugged into the figurine collecting game, obviously. Um, I have pre-ordered all of the SH figure arts for One Piece, the new ones. Uh, so they're all one uh, but the close enough that I think it's okay because Zoro's got three swords, that's fine. He's just got a black coat and the eye thing, but I already knew about the eye thing. Uh, Luffy's just Wano, so he's time skip. But none of his accessories seem like spoilers. Uh, Sanji, same thing, nothing's really a spoiler uh, because he's got the hot foot thing now, so I'm like, okay, cool, I, I know what that is. So that's great. Um, the other thing is, is that as of recording this, they announced another SH figure arts for One Piece. And my sort of goal is to have a set of straw hats that I buy that aren't pre-owned because it's so annoying <laughs> to get into One Piece now and being who I am because I love collecting, um, that it's really annoying getting into One Piece and feeling the need to get the straw hats, but getting in so late that all this good stuff's already been made uh, and it's hard to track down new at least. Um, my goal is to have a new set of straw hats, and so when they announced the SH figure arts, I was like, fantastic, it can finally happen. Um, so anyway, the first three are straw hats, and the new one is Yamato. So, <laughs> uh, I have to get it, because it's Yamato, and Yamato is the reason why I started One Piece in general. It wasn't really because I was missing out, it was because I was like, they look cool, I want to know what's going on. Um, so I have to get it because it's Yamato regardless, but... It's annoying because this represents a thing of we might not get all of the straw hats in SH figure arts. We also might not, and if we do get them, it might be a while. Because what they're doing with figure arts lately, 
Uh, there are some jumbo size ones or non-standard size figures. Uh, I can see Frankie being something like that. I can see Jinbei being something like that. But how long will it take to get something like that? If we're already starting on the Wano outfits, are you going to do like a Wano Frankie or are you going to do New World Frankie? Uh, I don't know. How are you going to pull it off? What are you going to choose for outfits? Just to... <sighs> It's annoying. Uh, so the way they've structured this, it's like, oh, anything goes now, doesn't it? Uh, so I'm going to buy it regardless, but like... I would have liked to have the straw hats first. <laughs> Especially since the old uh, SH figure arts one piece ones that I looked up, they look so bad. Like make some pre-time skip ones, make some just after time skip ones. It's fine. I like the modern SH figure arts. I love the sculpts of them. Like people might have issues with the paint apps, uh, but it makes it generally a better figure to handle. But the way they've been designing faces and accessories lately and things like that, I love it. Especially the non-Dragon Ball ones. Usually they put a way more effort into them. Uh, although the premium Bandai Dragon Ball ones, they put amazing effort into. Uh, it's weird. It's inconsistent. But usually the non-premium Bandai uh, Dragon Ball figures are cheap, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, roughly the only One Piece news that I can think of that isn't a spoiler thing for me. Because I try and avoid it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, roughly where I am for One Piece a day currently. Uh, I don't really know what the next arc is, don't really know how long it will last, uh, but as per usual I will just continue uh, the experiment until I finish or well, until I catch up. Uh, and then who knows what will happen when I catch up, it might be monthly discussion videos, uh, or I might just, you know, just keep live tweeting until something major happens in the manga. I might be one of those YouTubers where it's like, this is what happened in the latest chapter. This, we understand because of this one panel, uh, Luffy is actually a Saiyan or some bullcrap like that. <laughs> I don't want to be that YouTuber, um, but who knows what I'll be in like, what, two years? Year and a bit? Um, when I catch up. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for now. Really enjoy the franchise. It has its massive ups and downs, but what doesn't? Uh, but it's just that when it has its ups, it's fantastic. It feels like even when it's on the down swing, it's just that it's boring, not that it's bad. Uh, and I am greatly exaggerating a lot of this. It's just that uh, sometimes you want it to get on with it. But generally, it is a fantastic series absolutely understand why it's got the success that it does. It is just fantastic all the way through. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll see you all in the next One Piece video, and I hope you enjoyed this one.